you want to talk about, you can you can hit Control Plus again, and it'll continue to zoom in. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'm going to escape to get out of that. Mm -hmm. And let me just eject. No. <laughs> um, I'm going to eject your flash drive so we can have I that don't back. Walk out here without it. Yes. <laughs> People have tried. <laughs> That's why I like to just make a copy, and that way they don't have to I've worry about it. I've done a few. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Test one. Test one, two. Got it. Break out of some karaoke, y'all don't be disappointed now. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Durham Planning Commission. The members of the Durham Planning Commission have been appointed by the City Council and the County Board of Commissioners as an advisory board to the elected officials. You should know that the city that the elected officials have the final say on any issue brought before us tonight. If you wish to speak on an agenda item, please go to the table to my left and sign up to speak. 
For those wishing to speak, please state your name and your address clearly when you come to the podium. Please speak clearly into the microphone. Each side, those wishing to speak in favor of an item and those wishing to speak in opposition to an item will have 10 minutes to present each side. The time will be divided amongst all persons wishing to speak. If you are here opposing rezoning tonight, you should be aware of what's called a protest petition. A protest petition will be, can be very helpful to those residents who live in a rezoning area. Please consult the planning department staff for any details on a protest petition, and they will be happy to help you. You should also, you should keep in constant touch with the planning department as to when your case will go before the elected officials for a final vote. Finally, all motions are stated in the affirmative, so if a motion fails or ties, the recommendation is for denial. Thank you. Can we have a roll call? Commissioner Beeland. Commissioner Boyd. Commissioner Davis. Commissioner Gibbs. Vice Chair Harris. Present. Chair Jones. Present. Commissioner Huff. Present. Commissioner Lamb. Present. Commissioner Paget. Present. Commissioner Smudget. Smudget. Uh, present. Comm Commissioner Whitley. Present. Commissioner Winders. Commissioner Walters. All right, thank you. I did receive an email from uh, Commissioner Davis today requesting the, uh, an excused absence and Commissioner Huff may be running late or may be absent. She's out of town, so we'll note that. Do we have any adjustments to the ad agenda? Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. Pat Young with the planning department. No adjustments tonight, but I can certify for the record that all public hearing items before you have been advertised in accordance with law and the affidavits are on file with the planning department to that effect. All right, thank you. Yes, yes sir. Get the mic. Can you get a mic? Just turn the mic. A question about um, the update, updated um, phone numbers, email addresses of commissioners? Yes. She, she sent them out shortly after that meeting again. So we'll make a note um, to send you um, a copy of them. Oh, give me a chance to look for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can we make a note of that to, to send Reverend Willie a copy? All right, thank you. Personal delivery. So can we have uh, approval of the minutes, ma'am? We have some technical difficulties, so we have to pass the mic. We had an email request from APA asking us to participate in their newsletter. Did anybody else get that email? Did anyone want to participate? Thank you. <laughs> so to answer your question, um, actually we can move that down to new business and we can come back to it. Yes, okay, so we'll put that under 6B for uh, new business. All right, so now we can go back to uh, four, which is the approval of the minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. All right, so moved and properly second, seconded by Commissioner Smutsky. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Minutes has passed 11 to 0. All right, thank you. Yeah. So let's move down to, uh, we'll open the public hearing for corners at Briar Creek for a zoning case.
Good evening. I'm Scott Whiteman from the Planning Department. This case is, uh, despite what it says on my slide, is Z1224A, the corners at Briar Creek Initial. This is a an initial zoning request for a, an, an, some parcels of land that are proposed for annexation. This is actually fairly common, but not something that the Planning Commission sees very often because back in 2005, the Planning Commission passed a resolution saying you recommended approval of any initial zoning of newly annexed land in which uh, the proposed city zoning was the same as the county zoning. However, this particular case is primarily in Wake County, so that uh, particular situation doesn't apply, so a Planning Commission recommendation on the initial zoning would be required. The site is, uh, the portion in Durham County is zoned RR Rural Residential, and then there's a myriad of uh, zoning districts in the City of Raleigh's extraterritorial jurisdiction. And the proposal is to apply an initial City of Durham zoning of rural residential, which is the least intense zoning allowed in the uh, tier based on the size of the lot, which is the City Council policy for newly annexed properties. It's about approximately 121 acres. Here's a context map of the site. Um, the very northern tip is in Durham County near the uh, recently approved Del Webb Carolina Arbors project. Uh, most of the site is in Wake County, which is currently in the city of Raleigh's zoning jurisdiction only. As you see from the aerial map, although this site is primarily undeveloped, it is near the fairly intensely developed uh, Briar Creek area in, within Raleigh's city limits. So staff uh, does determine that the request is not consistent with the comprehensive plan, but is consistent with the city policy regarding initial zoning of newly annexed land. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. We have one person signed up to speak. And that's uh, Patrick Biker. Good evening, Chairman Jones, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Patrick Biker. I live at 2614 Stewart Drive here in Durham. I'm an attorney with Morningstar Law Group, and our, our office address is 630 Davis Drive in Durham. I'm just here to say that uh, uh, our firm is representing the property owners for this uh, rezoning request, and we'll be bringing forward a, uh, a uh, rezoning for uh, commercial, mixed use, and multifamily on this 121 acres, and we'll look forward to presenting that to you uh, uh, probably sometime this spring. Look forward to talking with you about that. Thank you for your time tonight. Be happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? If not, we'll close the public hearing and bring it back before the uh, commissioners. Do we have anyone up here wishing to speak? Any questions? All right. Can we get a motion? I'll make the motion to move Oh, grab you. Is it on? Microphone. I'll make the Mr. Chair, I move we approve uh, zoning case 130027. Sorry. No. No. Sorry. Let the one that's up here. Okay. Okay, Mr. Chair. <laughs> I move zoning case 120024A. Moved and proper, second by Mr. Smutsky, second it. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Motion has passed 11 to zero. Thank you. So we'll move down to 5B, 54 Plaza. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. This is the zoning map change case Z1300021, 54 Plaza. The applicant is Durham Imperial Investors. 
The site is uh, within the county's jurisdiction. However, this is also part of a consolidated land use item for uh, annexation uh, consideration as one item. So we've reviewed it under the city's jurisdiction and regulations. The request is from the existing zoning designation of commercial neighborhood to commercial general with a development plan for 5.436 acres and the proposed use is for 33,000 square feet of non-residential. The site is in the suburban tier at 5082 and 5904 South Miami Boulevard, which is the west side of South Miami Boulevard, north of Searles Court and just north of the Durham and Wake County line. And it is bounded on the west side by railroad right away. The request does meet the standards of the commercial general district as identified on this table, as well as the associated development plan, which we'll get to. Here are the existing conditions of the site as shown on the development plan. There, there is some floodway fringe to the rear of the property, um, closest to the railroad right away. Uh, there's a site uh, of a demolished house uh, towards the frontage of the site. It is primarily undeveloped tree and tree covered. The proposed condition shows um, the condi um, standards that satisfy the elements of a development plan. We do have our site access points, tree coverage area, as show the asterisks represent tree preservation and then supplemental tree preservation will also be on the site. You'll see a building envelope um, a proposal that includes a reduction in the width of the uh, buffer, uh, which is uh, typical. It has to be represented on the development plan to have the ability to request that at the site plan stage. The commitments are a maximum of 33,000 square feet of non-residential floor area. The four site access points, two of them are across access and two are on to South Miami Boulevard, a maximum impervious surface of 88%, as well as uh, the tree coverage preservation. The graphic commitments are the access points, tree coverage areas, buffer location, and uh, reduction where shown, and the roadway improvements as indicated. There's a number of de design commitments that um, satisfy our design commitment guidelines uh, addressed here, and the buildings will face the street, be oriented to the street. The request is consistent with our future land use map of our comprehensive plan, and as well as the applicable policies. And staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And I am available for any questions. All right. Thank you. We have four people signed up to speak. Have uh, Brandon White, Jordan Brewer, Sal Mazzara, and Carrie Finley. So, if you want to speak, you can come to the podium. Uh, together, you have 10 minutes. Good evening, Chairman, fellow commissioners. Uh, my name is Sal Mazzara. I'm a land planner with Kimley Horn and Associates at 333 Fayetteville Street in Raleigh. Um, just briefly to let you know that I'm here on behalf of the applicant and I'm here with some members of our development team, our consultant team, uh, primarily to answer any questions. Uh, we appreciate staff's presentation and think they've covered all the, all the pertinent points. Um, so at this point, we, we look forward to um, responding to any questions you may have. Uh, we think it's a great project and a commercial corridor that'll provide really needed services for this area and it's very consistent with uh, your land use documents. So with that, uh, we will just be available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. If we don't have anyone else wishing to speak, I'll bring it back before the commissioners. Do we have any commissioners that have any questions? Uh, Mr. Smusky, passing. Is this on? Yes. Thank you. So um, I was wondering if this is for staff or for the applicant, can you clarify what the proffer is for the bike lane? Sure. 
Good evening, Earl Llewellyn with Kimley Horn and Associates. Uh, just this afternoon, we made some clarifications with NCDOT staff regarding this. We are willing to proffer uh, construction of additional pavement along Miami Boulevard that would accommodate a future bike lane, and we can work with the wording of that committed element with uh, staff. So then is that going to be across the whole frontage of your property with Miami Boulevard? That is correct. Okay. I don't have any other questions right now. Okay, thank you. Does that satisfy the planning department's requirements? <clears throat> yes, again, Pat Young with the planning department. Bill Judge can elaborate, but that, that's what we requested, uh, the proffer that was just made was for the entire frontage. It's been our practice, um, even though the improvement is just the turn lane, that they have the equipment deployed, and it's, it's pretty straightforward to make those improvements, and the, and the bike plan calls for it. So we appreciate the applicant's additional proffer. Okay. Yeah, Bill Judge for transportation. I was just going to confirm that that would resolve the transportation concern listed in the staff report. Thank you. Any other commissioners wishing to speak? Can we get a motion? Give him, pass him the microphone again. Oh, wait. My, my voice will carry. No, that's Give okay. Just get a microphone, help us all out. I move approval of case number Z13000021. Okay. Second. Okay. I'm not sure if that was heard, but. Mr. Chair? Yes. I just want to make sure that motion includes the additional proffer. Correct. Restate your motion and include the initial, the Hello? additional proffer. Is this on? No. Okay, so pass this mic down one more time. Here we go. Here we go. I move approval of the case number Z130021 with the inclusion of the proffer that we heard tonight that includes a bike lane across the entire frontage of the property in fr uh, along Miami Boulevard. Thank you. Second. Second. All right. We get, so all those in favor, it's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, let it be, be known by raising your right hand. Motion has carried 11 to zero. Just for clarification, we're going to recognize anybody who, had, who opposed to it. So, no opposition. So, all right. Does that work for you? All right. Thank you. We're going to move down to item 5C, Beth Page Village Revisions. Good evening, Amy Wolf with the Planning Department. This request is case Z1300030, Beth Page Village Revisions. The applicant is John R. McAdams. It is within the city's jurisdiction and the request is to change the commitments of the existing development plan. So our review was limited in scope to just the, the commitments. And I'll go over that here briefly. The acreage of the site is 407.27 acres and the existing zoning district, which will also be the proposed zoning district, is planned development residential 4.733, industrial light with a development plan and commercial general with a development plan. The site is in the suburban tier. It's in the northwest quadrant of Page Road and Chin Page Road intersection. And the existing development plan, just for context, proposes 1,300 units in the planned development residential um, designation, as well as 50,000 square feet of office and 150,000 square feet of commercial. The applicant um, has three requests. Uh, um, the first is a modification of three commitments, which is number three, 13, and 14. The first one, number three, is adding um, that the school the school um, proffer, donation proffer, uh, will uh, be exempt from payment of the fee uh, for um, what was previously proffered. So they're, they're adding 
uh, again, the exemption not to pay the school proffer for housing that is governed by the Housing of Older Persons Act. And the second modification of a commitment ele element is number 13, and they are changing the language for the commitment for some site amenities, um, including the, the addition of words like active res recreation as opposed to usable open space. They're proposing a swimming pool instead of a, a specific type of pool, a junior Olympic pool that, that was stricken, as well as the other commitments you can see here, um, clarifying what amenities will uh, be provided. The third modification of a commitment element is to number 14, uh, clarifying, again, some of the amen amenities that will be on the site um, that will be provided prior to, prior to the 500 certificate of occupancy. And you can see the, the changes, uh, they're tr uh, trading out a soccer or football field for other um, amenities. The element, uh, the second request of the proposal is to strike uh, commitment number 15 that's the, on the existing plan, which is to remove, pr remove protection of a cemetery and uh, provide open space around that cemetery. Again, they are proposing to remove that commitment. In its place, request number three is to add a commitment. Um, the full uh, language of this commitment is in the staff report as well as on the uh, attached development plan, but essentially pr um, adding age restriction commitment for, uh, for the uh, residential units uh, in accordance with the Federal Housing for Older Persons Act. And you can reference the full entirety of that language. It, it provides um, an enforcement mechanism as well as timing for, for how to, um, how we will monitor that. The request is consistent with the future land use map, which designates the site as low to medium density residential, recreation, open space, uh, industrial, and commercial. And staff determines that this request is consistent with the comprehensive plan and applicable policies and ordinances. And I'll be available for any questions. All right, thank you. I have one person, one person signed up to speak. It's Bob Zimwalt. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairman, members of the commission. I'm Bob Zimwalt with uh, McAdams. Um, my, uh, Address is 2905 Meridian Parkway in Durham. And I'm um, Director of Planning and Design with McAdams. I've been involved with this project since the initial design back in probably 04. Uh, and I'm here representing Reader and Partners tonight. And uh, Scott Lay was intending to come, but he has a sick wife and a sick kid, so he's home taking care of them both. Um, just to give you a short history, Beth Page, 400 acre master plan, as Amy mentioned, originally approved back in 06. It included the 1,300 residential units it was 500,000 square feet of office and 150,000 square feet of commercial. Uh, due to the downturn in the economy, it sort of sat idle for quite a while. And now Reader and Partners is pretty excited to have a age-restricted home builder step up and want to move forward with about half the community. And so we've actually already submitted a site plan for 650 age-restricted um, detached lots. So about half the residential in the community. It was submitted November 12th and we're addressing first round comments right now. So in order to sort of adapt this application from what it was originally designed for back in 06, we just want to make the, the amendments to the text commitments that Amy's mentioned and you know just to quickly summarize one the voluntary school impact not proposing to change any of the commitments for the remaining 600 and some odd lots everything single family town home multifamily they're going to still volunteer the same thousand dollars per single family 500 per i believe it was 500 per townhouse and multifamily uh 300, 300 thank you amy uh, all we're asking for is to add one more category since age restricted housing doesn't contribute students to the school system we just want to have an additional option for this portion of the community to not make that payment uh, second um we're just, as Amy mentioned, just making some modifications to some of the recreational amenities. Back, the first developer who wanted to do this job, they originally wanted a soccer field. There just hasn't been any demand for that, and so this community is gonna have the bulk of its residents will be 
older folks, 55 and older, and so we just wanted to add some better options to satisfy the rec. We're not reducing the amount of open space, nothing like that. Uh, the third one, um, the preservation of the cemetery in the northwest quadrant of the site. Um, you know, with further investigation of that cemetery, there's one grave out there, and it's in pretty poor condition. And so the, the developer of the age-restricted community just thought that could cause some concerns or be troublesome to a resident who owned a house backing up right to that one grave sitting behind their, you know, their house. So there are mechanisms for advertising and relocating a grave site in accordance with state and local statutes. So they just want the opportunity to be able to do that, that's all. And then finally, as Amy mentioned, we want to be able to apply the age-restricted vehicle trip generation counts to this portion of the community. There's no changes to any of the roadway improvements under the zoning. They all stay the same. It would just allow us to phase them a little more accurately with what type of traffic's generated from an age-restricted community, which is m much fewer peak hour vehicle trips. Um, that's all I have. I appreciate your time. I'm here for any questions. And I've also got Earl here from uh, Earl Llewellyn from Kinley Horn if you have any questions for him. Thank you. All right, thank you. Do we have any, com I'll close the uh, public hearing and bring it back before the commissioners. Do we have anyone else, any commissioners wishing to speak? Mr. Uh, Harris and Mr. Harris and Smutsky and uh, Gibbs. Uh, just one question for you. Are you far enough along to know what the market value of the unit costs of those? I don't know. Okay. I wish my builder were here. This is the way we like, they like to feel about this community is it's like a step up from sort of what the Dell Webb communities are doing around the community. So if you look at what's going on in North Durham or over in Cary, it's just a bit of a notch above that with finishes and, you know, so I'm, but I'm not sure about the pricing. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> So the first question I had is about the cemetery, mm -hmm. and there are procedures to follow, and there are agencies, you know, so that you can contact. And we know that there's only—I mean, there may be one gravestone, but there may be other Absolutely. bodies. Absolutely. Yes. So they okay. would have to come out and identify all that, and we would propose to do it. Correct. To be honest with you, they don't even know if they're going to do it yet. The proposal we have in front of the on the site plan doesn't affect it at all. But it's just we're concerned that at some point, at the, it's in the last phase of the project. If people start going, I don't want to live right next to that, we want the option to be able to move it to another portion on the property or somewhere where it's in an open space field or something. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. But, and, and it won't be this group that has to uh, police that. Sure. The second thing is, in, in the part in, was it number 14? Uh, where it says one of the following, and it'll either be two tennis courts or two bocce courts. Um, would the staff interpret one of each to be okay? I mean, just for diversity, I mean, do, does it have to just be that or? Hmm? One tennis court, one bocce court, or a multi-purpose field and a bocce court? Or? Sure, I understand the question. Um, the beginning of it, it says contain at least one of the following. So a strict read would say it would, it would have to be two tennis courts or two bocce courts. That would be a strict read, and I'm wondering right. if that's the strict read that you would enforce, or would you be more lenient? Yeah, the, <clears throat> the answer to the question is at the time of site plan, which may be several years from now, the planning director at that time will have to interpret that provision. And so there's really no way to answer it definitively because it's, it's that future planning direct may be the current one, depending on when the site plan comes in. Um, we'll have to interpret that. I personally would interpret it liberally and allow it to be one of each, but it, a strict read does say uh, only one or the other. I just, I have no way of answering that. Unequivocally, the applicant, if they, if they so choose, can clarify here and we'll be happy to accept that if that's desired or acceptable to the applicant. I mean, what I would say is it's not far off. Um, the only reason that whole rec center, it's a big rec center, this is gonna be like a, 15 to 20,000 square foot building. The only reason it's not in our current site plan is client design is currently working on the clubhouse architecture, but I have the plan in my office. It'll be in in a couple months and it's got 
four tennis courts, eight or 10 bocce courts, an Olympic sized pool. I mean, it's so far above okay. and beyond us that okay. we'll have no trouble hitting any, all this. The most important question I had before my time runs out mm -hmm. is about the funding for the schools. Yes. Okay, so I think I, what I heard staff say is that there's a federal program that would, that would allow the people not to pay those. They're not required. They're not required school impact fees. They were volunteered by the developer in the original zoning. So we're just adding a category so that, because the concern originally was, look at the impact this 1,300 unit community is gonna have on the school system. So to remedy that, we volunteered a payment of $1,000 per single, 300 per townhouse or multifamily. But then, then the owners of those townhouses and homes would then end up paying? The developer pays it. Well, but they would end up paying taxes to the community that would include school taxes, right? The, my, my, point is, my point is there are a lot of people in this community mm -hmm. that, don't, that don't contribute to the students in this community, mm -hmm. okay? But yet we pay school taxes because sure. we think it's a public good, Sure. okay? And so I have a concern that, you know, the, the people in this new development should be contributing to the public good as well. And so they are paying taxes, right? Uh, well, that, that's correct. Yeah. They are paying taxes, and I yeah. just wanted to verify that. But uh, yeah. so I, I did want to think about this funding mechanism for the school. Yeah, all I would say is the um, the way the commitment is is derived. It's not really a federal program. There's a federal definition to what is an eligibly age restricted community. There are certain legal requirements the federal law right. specifies. Um, the plat that goes along with the the final recordation of the lots for this development will have to identify. Uh, the units that are under the auspices of that federal law, and if this is approved as written, when the building, when the builder comes in for a building permit for that lot, if it's under applied under this under this uh, federal pro, uh, law regarding age restricted housing, then there would be no uh, proffer required. Right. But but ta taxation would apply just like any other property in the in the county. Well, my, okay, so my concern is that the schools still be funded. I think we're, we're going to have some discussion on that. I'll think about that before we have the final. Okay. I mean, the thing, you cannot have any children that live in this portion of the community according to this type of housing. So there will be no impacts to the schools from these 650 units. None. Other than they're paying taxes and not utilizing the schools. Okay, am I on? Okay. <clears throat> uh, your last statement has kind of uh, confused me, which is not, not hard to do. <laughs> uh, are, are all of these, all of these units are not going to be uh, age restricted? Is that my, my understanding was that part of the development would be for right. age restricted and then. That's right. Uh, and that leads me to my question, which was, have you determined yet what, which of these pods or which pod or would be devoted to yes. that type of housing or is it gonna be interspersed or? Yeah, it's pretty much um, everything except pod A. Okay, if you're looking at the plan, the ones up on, on Chin Page Road A and C, those are commercial. So right up along mm -hmm. the intersection of Page and Chin Page. The next pod back, pod D, that's office. Right. Pod G is residential. Pod F is residential, which is just above the roundabout. And then to the west, pod E is office. Everything else is age restricted. So everything from that sort of pod F to the north is all age restricted. Is there That makes sense. Yes. Okay. Uh, and this looks like a a good mix of uh, commercial, and I'm assuming whatever is going here. And this is just a, uh, my curiosity. Uh, would this these things be to serve not only the this community but everybody else? Uh, the the commercial. No, 
yeah, the commercial. I mean, uh, that, yeah, that was the idea that, you know, the only other place to, you know, get groceries or whatever is you've got to go over to Briar Creek. There's really no other sh grocery shopping really close to here. It, it doesn't, that's not to say it would be a grocery store, it's just whatever the market will demand, but they're hoping for some sort of, you know, little local grocer or, you know, some restaurants or something like that, but the housing will start to draw some of the, the demand for that once it starts moving forward. Sure, and that, that uh, sort of in my mind would develop a village type yeah. of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am assuming uh, well, I, I know everything will be uh, ADA compliant and all that with considering the mm -hmm. age uh, risk. Right. Uh, one, part of the, one of the things you guys don't have the benefit of is all the other things that went into the plan years ago. Yeah. Some of the other commitments, there's three miles of trails that the project's building. So they're really wanting to make this a walkable you know, sort of knit together community, mm -hmm. allowing people to walk up to the village center, have you know, there's really, there's actually another 500,000 square feet of office approved right next door. There's a mil, million square feet of office just kind of right in here to go with all this residential. I, I know I'm out of time, but just one quick question. I, I think I remember in here that there was a, a bus stop. Yes. That was, uh, will, that, will that be along? <clears throat> The, the commitment that we made was we will reach out to TTA and data and at any time during the entire life of the project that they want one along here, we'll build it for them. The, the problem now is there's no bus lines here. So it's funny you ask that because today I reached out to our case planner to ask them who I should talk to at data. I suspect they're going to say we don't have a need right now, but this project's going to be building for probably eight or 10 years. So every time a site plan comes in, we will ask data or TTA, do, do you want the stop? And if so, where do you want it? And then we'll build it. But I would imagine at some point, they'll probably want one up at the entrance on, Chin, on page. Mm -hmm. And they'll probably want one, I would imagine when the commercial starts getting built, probably down by the commercial. And then we would do it at that point. Uh, this is an encouraging uh, development, I think. Thanks. Commissioner Whitley. It was my understanding in reading this that um, these were impact fees and not taxes. Is that right? That's, is that right? The school, the school fees? Right. The, um, there's no school impact fees in Durham. So everyone who lives in Durham County would pay taxes and some portion of that goes toward the schools. Right. These were voluntary proffers made during the zoning back in 2006. Right. Yeah. And, and half of the uh, development would be, um, um, they will not be exempt. Only the senior, That's right. senior citizens right. will be exempt. Correct. That's what we're asking. Right. Yeah. I would I would ask my colleagues to support this measure and I'm ready to carry it. Get one. Thank you. I, I, I have some concerns with the school fees and a question of staff. Um, my concern has to do with sort of longer term policy um, among this commission and among the city in general having to do with impact fees and uh, development that affects the schools uh, in particular and so my question is to staff is could you give the Commission a sense of what Durham's current precedents are with respect to these voluntary impact fees have we as a city set a particular policy direction with regard to how these impact fees get established I understand certainly that these are voluntary by the developer um, and that we're talking about something completely different from taxes. I understand that, but if you could give me and the other commissioners a good sense of the precedent. Sure. Um, Pat Young again with the planning department. Uh, as, as you alluded to, Commissioner Lamb, and I think Mr. Zumwalt did, um, to my knowledge, there's not any jurisdiction in North Carolina that has legal authorization to charge non-voluntary required impact fees for schools. Uh, Durham does, ha does have authority and does collect impact fees for other improvements. 
um, including transportation uh, and recreation. But um, there is a longstanding practice going back at least 20 years, or at least 15 years, probably closer to 20, of um, voluntary donations for school uh, improvements to d directly to DPS associated, especially with large residential developments such as this one. Um, I, I'll look to staff to look at kind of an average amount. It, it's varied. Yeah, typically 500 per unit, so this is certainly 1,000 for single family, 300 for townhouses is in that range. Um, there's not explicit policy direction since this is strictly voluntary proffer. We, we don't have a policy direction on that, but there has been a longstanding practice. Um, and then th we really don't have a lot of experience with large scale age restricted communities. Del Webb was the first very large one. I know there was a few others over the last several years. Uh, what's the one out on? Uh, off of Farrington, uh, Farrington. The Epcon? Chapelwood, and then there's yeah. the Ar uh, Culp Arbor. There you go, yeah. Um, and I don't believe any of, I don't believe any of those types of developments that are age-restricted made uh, school proffers. So what's being requested here is consistent with practice, and there's not any direct policy guiding this. Okay, so thank you. That's exactly what I was after. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Question for uh, staff. Which department within the city has the uh, jurisdiction for issuing any citations regarding, um, I guess, breaking the age-restricted covenants? Yeah, that would be the planning department. Um, what we would require is a periodic, I believe it's yearly, certification from the HOA. Um, that they're they're enforcing the covenants as as recorded so that that is the zoning enforcement division of the planning department which is under my supervision okay so my question is have as a city have we ever issued a violation for such matter no we again we haven't had any to my knowledge the, the first time we had uh and staff can correct me if i'm misspeaking um specific commitments in a, on a development plan that directly pertain to age restricted um, aspect was the Del Webb. Right, I, I, I'm not sure, I'm not aware of any others that had commitments that directly pertained to, again I'm looking at staff, the age restricted aspect. There are other age restricted communities but I don't believe that there were uh, essentially specific commitments tied to that like there are for uh, this development and for Del Webb and we certainly intend to enforce Del Webb and it's just at the beginning stages there's maybe 40 or 50 homes being under construction now okay so it's uncharted territory for the city of Durham basically it's, it somewhat is but we, we feel confident that it's as it's enforceable as possible uh, as it could possibly be we, we made it clear to council and I think to the Planning Commission with the Del Webb project that there's always some risk. It's very difficult to enforce against an HOA, for example, that goes defunct, uh, inoperable, no longer appoints members, et cetera. Uh, but as long as the HOA stays solvent and the development stays viable, it's, it's as enforceable as anything else we have. Okay, just wonder, sir. Oh, okay, Mr. Padgett had a question. Can you hear me now? All right, mm -hmm. got it. I'm getting back to the cemetery thing. And, and I, like you said, you don't know how many's in there. It might be one tombstone. There may be 20 people in there. Sure. And, and, and they can determine, I guess, somehow who, what, where, when, and all that. And I know you talk about maybe moving at a later time. Oh, when doing that, there's going to be some families involved in that, I would assume. Mm -hmm. And, I, and yep. I guess, for me, if I have a family member in there, my concern is they were there sure that the family chose them to mm -hmm. be there yeah. and 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 i guess the laws of protect cemeteries and all the things mm -hmm. that go with it but i don't know that i'd want one of my loved ones just picked up moved like like a mobile home if and, and that's why yeah. I hello commissioner uh, smusky hello we'll give you the mic well, i mean that but that's my thought and, sure. I, and I don't know are we taking in consideration the family's feelings and thoughts about this and i'm not mm -hmm. talking about compensation or oh, a check yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about is 
how do we deal with the emotions of, of a mother who has a son or the emotions? Well, I can, I can answer that. If one person says they don't want to move, we're done. We won't even okay. do it. That's just, that's kind of, it's, to me, they're so old that our, our belief is probably that there's nobody left who would know, but right. this isn't that important, to be honest with you. If people here or the council says, we don't want you to do this, we'll just take it right off, because okay. it's not that important. It's just something we want to have the option to do it, but if it becomes a problem, we'll just withdraw right. it. Well, that, yeah. that answers my question. Yeah, That's sure. all I want. I was just, that was one of them questions that I'm sitting here thinking, if I don't ask it, yeah. then I wonder, you know, what the answer is. Well, so it almost that. sounds bad for us to ask it, and I knew that going in. Okay, <laughs> you know, okay. It's just well, a weird... and that's all I want yeah. to follow up yeah. on. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Sure. Move. All right. Move. Move. Mr. Whitley. No, move. I move that we um, pass seven, I'm, I'm sorry. I move that we pass Z130003 Second. This is moved and properly seconded by Commissioner um, Harris. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. All right, thank you. Any opposition? Motion has passed 11 to 0. All right, thank you. We we'll move down to seven, no, six A, any announcements? Mr. Chair, uh, for next month, there's a, a series of uh, items related to the Rougemont plan scheduled and uh, one additional zoning case. Oh. All right, thank you. And another announcement, um, Commissioner Beachwood is no longer with us and I've uh, appointed uh, Commissioner Davis, I mean, um, David Harris, Commissioner David Harris, to the Joint City County Planning Committee, better known as the JCCPC. Yes, another acronym. Um, so that's, that's it, and he accepted that uh, appointment. We thank him for it. And the other one was 6B, which was Commissioner Bynum's question about the publication. Okay, I'll pass you the mic and you can restate your question or your comment. May I be excused? Oh yes, uh, Commissioner Harris is excused at this point. I just wondered if others had received this email from APA and if people wanted to participate or not. So I think we all might have received it. Uh, typically, uh, this is a, a question to Pat. When we, when we get requests like that, what is the precedent, if you will, to participate in things of that sort? Yeah, it's a, a good question. It's the first time in my tenure that we've received a request quite like that. Um, we're certainly happy to support uh, y'all, coordinate. I think they asked for a photo. and. We'd certainly be happy to do a, a write-up that you all could edit or evaluate. I mean, we'll be happy to support uh, that if, if you like. You all certainly work hard and deserve uh, recognition and credit, and, and if you all want to do it, we'll be happy to, to assist. But there, there's really no specific precedent. Uh, again, I think this is probably, I think this, my understanding is this is kind of a new initiative by the uh, Planning Association to highlight the work of citizen planners such as yourselves. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do we have, should we have any discussion on that? Uh, move forward? Do we do it? Do we not? Yes, I'm open to it. Okay. I, for me, I think anytime somebody reaches out from the outside looking in, trying to figure out, it, it can't do anything but help us kind of spread the, the message of what any planning commission throughout the state does. So if we have an organization that is interested in what planning does, then I think we kind of, don't we have to, but I kind of feel obligated that we are of a public interest and we are public servants. So if we have that request, I think we, we probably really need to look at that, whether it's one group photo or whatever it might be. 
So I, I wholeheartedly support that. So whatever we can do to make it happen, I'm, I'm with it. So. All right. Thank you. Any other comment on it? No. Uh, so what we'll do is I can get a motion as a group as to what we're doing, and we'll either do it all or we'll not do it at all. So we can get a motion and um, perhaps have a vote on it if we don't have any other further discussion on it. I'll make the motion that we go ahead and do that. Second. Okay. So moved and uh, properly second. Um, all those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. One opposed. The motion is carried 10 to zero. Okay. So I'll reach out to the uh, author of that email and just tell him we uh, agree to it. And if is there anything in particular that we may need to do prior to doing it. Anything else? No? Yes, sir. Um, now, we're not giving, we're not put anything in the newsletter that we have not endorsed before the public. Correct. Right. So based on how it's playing out in my mind and kind of what uh, Mr. Young's alluded to is any write up concerning the planning commission mm -hmm. will be approved by all members. Right. Um, to my knowledge, they have they were not asking for individual interviews. They just kind of want to do a spotlight on the Durham City County Planning Commission. No problem. Makes sense. OK. It, it was asked. Never OK. All right, thank you. So anything else? If all hearts and minds are clear, we'll go ahead and uh, adjourn. Thank you.